Demi Donsat and this is a short video to show you the materials that I use in my pastel toolkit. It's to answer questions that I often get asked at um, courses that I teach and demos and um, workshops that I do. I do a lot of different subject matter but it's when I'm doing animal work that I use the biggest range of pastels. There's a lot more of this information in my book Pastels for the Absolute Beginner which is available now um, and also if you take a look at my website you can find out about the book, some of the pastels that I use and some video courses that I have where you can have a go at using them yourself. So um, let's take a look at the materials. So let's have a look at the, um, the range of pastels that I use. Now before I start bear in mind that you get what you pay for with art materials. So if they appear to be expensive when you buy pastels it's probably because they're made with a really good quality pure pigment. Um, and a natural binder. If you're buying a really cheap and cheerful student quality set you're probably going to be getting coloured chalks. Now obviously the different products vary enormously so when I'm talking about soft pastels I'm actually talking about the range from soft to hard pastels. Soft pastels is an umbrella term that we use generally meaning that it's not oil pastel. Oil pastel is a completely separate thing and I'm not going to be talking about those. Um, so I think to do the sort of work that I like to do you need a range from soft to hard. Um, they've all got a mixture of pigment and binder. If you've got a really soft one it's going to have more pigment and less binder. And that, that ratio will dictate the kind of mark that you make. So first of all I'm working on a Windsor paper by Windsor & Newton but it could easily be a Canson paper or many of the other um, paper products out there. So starting with the softest, these are actually unison pastels from our new pastel school um, animal palette. Um, and I've just got these out to show you what they look like as a whole stick. But what I do when I use them is break them in half so that then I take the labels off and I break them in half which is quite painful but it's worth doing because then you can make um, a variety of marks and our starter set actually is half sticks um, it just means that you get more of a range of colours um, <clears throat> for that size of box so um, this is a soft unison colour pastel and as you can see it's um, it's got it's got it's got a lot of really rich um, pigment in it and when I soften it by smudging it um, I still get quite an intensity of, of colour. They also mix they mix really nicely either by smudging or by laying the colours over each other and I'm not using very exciting colours today because I want this to relate to animal and portrait work but you can see how I just really enjoy working with these. They're, they're handmade um, with pure pigments, natu always natural pigments. Um, and they, to me, they're the perfect mix of um, binder and pigment so that they're nice and creamy to use and beautifully soft and you can build up quite a lot of layers. But if you drop them on the floor, hopefully they don't break too much. Now, the other type of pastel that I use some of the time are these Faber-Castell poly, polychromos um, pastels which are much harder and again I only tend to use these for my animal work and you can see with this because it's got more um, binder in it it's actually much harder and less crumbly to that than that so you can make sharper marks um, but you don't get that intensity that you get with that so there's a place for everything it depends what, what you want do you want um do you want really rich pigment or do you want a sharp mark um but they they can work together one can go over the other um you'll notice that i'm cleaning them as i use them with just a bit of tissue yes my hands get dirty but i can live with that um, now this is a Conte crayon, a broken um, Conte carré crayon. These come in a box um, like this. You can get, you can buy them individually, or you can buy um, sets of twelve or twenty-four. 
Um, I really like these for my kind of um, detail work. Can you see it's, it's, it's an even sharper mark than the, the polychromos one. Um, I think these are baked in the process of being made. So they have a pigment and a binder, um, but they have that extra process in the manufacturer that, that um, means they are that bit harder. But again, like these first two, they are made with really good quality pigment. So um, hopefully they won't um, fade with time. And I've been using these for years and I've not had any I've not had any problems with them with them fading so these are absolutely fantastic for um for sketching out and for under layers but you can see you can also make quite nice sharp marks um with them and again they work well over the the softened under layer this is a bit of charcoal which i often use for sketching out which as you can see it is much much softer than these other types of pastel because it's not actually a pastel it's still made with burnt wood so it's just willow charcoal um, but it like I say it's lovely for under layers and um, it works particularly well with animal work because as you can see it, it's quite similar to the color of a lot of animal skin so it sort of gives you a nice base to work over but it also slightly fills in the grain of the paper so that can be quite useful at times um, and then last of all um, for this type of thing I've got some pastel pencils these are Faber Castell Pit Pastel Pencil which I really like to use um, but again I kind of only tend to use these for portrait and animal work but you can see they they do they do go over the softer pastel but you don't get the intensity you can get a much more intense mark on just paper then if you start to build it up on layers, um, layers of sort of softened, soft pastel. So to me, these aren't actually brilliant for detail in animal work. They're lovely for creating kind of hatched um, fur-like textures. But if I want to get fine detail, what I actually do is I go across to my easel here is I, um, I break the softer pastels, the unison pastels, into little shards. Um, and can you see how with that you get a much brighter, more intense mark than if, oops, there goes one on the floor, that's not how you're supposed to treat them. Um, that's what happens when I put the pastel pencil on. But this, this I, I do get a, um, I, I do get a sharper, a sharper mark with um, a broken shard of, of soft pastel. Obviously they don't last a terribly long time, but, um, but you get beautiful effects. This, last of all, is um, a product that I don't use a huge amount apart from for um, my backgrounds or putting a, a, a layer down underneath. These are pan pastels, which are a bit like a um, makeup that you put on with a makeup sponge. But you can see you can actually, for portrait and animal work, and um, my colleague Nell Watmore does beautiful things with these, with landscapes. Um, these definitely have their place. Um, and I hope you can see from what I've done here that there's a huge range of types of marks that you can make with them all. And you can use them all in conjunction with each other. Now, the using them together works particularly well on certain surfaces. Um, I will do another video about surfaces because there's so many of them and the way I build up layers in my work doesn't always work on, um, on other surfaces. So let's just look at those in a bit of detail. The um, softness of um, unison pastels harder polychromos, sharper marks, um, the Conte crayons and their sharper marks, softness of charcoal, um, the real sharpness of the mark of a pastel pencil and then the super softness of um, a pan pastel 
and let's have a look now at um, putting that together in a piece of work. So this is a pastel sketch of a terrier called Flick, um, inspired by a photograph by Teresa Grant, who deserves recognition because she takes fantastic photographs, particularly of animals. And you can see where I want to get softness, um, under here, around the ear, um, and also under the, the, the main body of the coat and in the, um, the background, I've used soft unis in pastels and I've either left them just picking up the surface of the, the texture of the surface um, or I've softened them to create a softness and then in some places to work over. And then the finer hairs I've worked over with Conte crayons um, pastel pencils, the very fine ones you can see, especially around the edge, they they would be pastel pencil. The eye had um, the depth of colour is done with um, a soft unison pastel. Around it is done with um, Conte crayons and a bit of pastel pencil, um, and that bit of shine is with a little shard of a of a soft pastel. So hopefully that shows you how they can be um, they can all be used together. I hope you found that useful. Um, like I said, if you'd like more information about any of the things I've been talking about, do have a look at my website and happy pastelling.